my dear friends, brothers, and sisters in Christ, we are gathered in the name of the Lord Jesus in order to render to the loving Father in the power of the Spirit fitting worship and praise. And our gathering this afternoon in this Eucharist is made more special by the presence of His Eminence, our main celebrant, Gaudencio Cardinal Rosales. Our Apostolic Nuncio to the Philippines, His Excellency Most Reverend Archbishop Giuseppe Pinto. And our uh, dear friends in the Episcopacy, the Archbishops and Bishops of the Philippines. We want to give special thanks to the Archbishops and Bishops who came all the way from Mindanao and uh, the Visayas to be part of our celebration. And we would like to mention in a special way the newly appointed Archbishop of Capiz, Archbishop-elect Joe Advincola. And of course, we have with us our very own Caviteño, the product of the Diocese of Imus, Bishop Pedro Arrigo. And our dear, our beloved Bishop Emeritus, Bishop Maning uh, Sobrevinas, Lolo Maning. We have the church before us. We have our great lay people, those who are promoting co-responsibility and participation in the church those who are part of the uh, pastoral councils in the parishes. We have our holy religious, holy looking <laughs> religious men and women, members of societies of apostolic life. We have the young, the not so young. We have the healthy and the not so healthy. We have our seminarians, those in formation, we have our beloved priests. The church is alive. The church is before us here. <clears throat> Last night, until the early morning hours today, around 10,000 faithful religious and priests gathered at the plaza of the Imus Cathedral in order to welcome the 25th of November. It was a moving sight to see people coming from different parts of Cavite, spending time with the Lord in vigil and prayer, and then journeying with the Lord and with each other, coming home to the Mother Church, coming home to the house of God. What made it more special was that you have this mammoth crowd of 10,000, but there was palpable in the air the spirit of prayer, of adoration, of repentance. And because it was the Lord that was fo the focus of the gathering there was a lot of decency, discipline, sharing, compassion. But why? Why get sleepy and tired on the eve of the 25th of November, 2011? Let me read a portion of an apostolic constitution, Christi Fidelium issued by the blessed Pope John the 23rd. 
some territories are to be taken from the Archdiocese of Manila and the Diocese of Lipa, and two new dioceses are constituted, whose names are the Diocese of Malolos and the Diocese of Imus. And I read, John, Bishop, Servant of the Servants of the Lord, for perpetual memory. It is our serious task received from God to provide for the assistance and the good of the Christian faithful. So we found it appropriate to positively respond to the appeal that our venerable brother Salvatore Sino, titular Archbishop of Perge, and Apostolic Nuncio to the Philippine Islands addressed to the Apostolic See after having consulted the ordinaries of the concerned territories, that is, to establish two other local dioceses because undoubtedly Catholic life flourishes where bishops are increased in order to lead the flock of the Christian faithful. Therefore, having asked the opinion on the issue of our venerable brother cardinals of the Holy Roman Church who preside over consistorial affairs, and having heard our venerable brothers Cardinal Rufino Santos, Archbishop of Manila, and Alejandro Olalia, Bishop of Lipa, we, with our supreme and apostolic authority determine and command the following. The next paragraph concerns the Diocese of Malolos, and the Bishop of Malolos is here with us, Bishop Joey Oliveros. Our twin, twin diocese. But the next paragraph goes this way. At the same time, we are separating from the Archdiocese of Manila, the territory that consists of the area of the civil province called Cavite, and from the Diocese of Lipa, the territory of the city of Tagaytay that belongs to the same province of Cavite. From these territories, we erect a new diocese to be called after the main town, Imus, to be defined by the same boundaries as the civil province of Cavite. The see of the bishop will be placed in the town of Imus and the cathedra of the Episcopal Magisterium in the Church of the Curia already existing there, dedicated to God in honor of the Blessed Virgin of the Pillar, and we elevate it to the rank and dignity of a cathedral church. Issued in Rome, in St. Peter's, on the 25th of November, in the year of the Lord, 1961, in the fourth year of our pontificate, the 25th of November, 50 years ago. Jubilee na po natin. For the past three years, the Diocese of Imus has been preparing for this year of grace. And we took as a theme something that is typically Caviteño, Caracol, the prayer dance that people engage in when they welcome especially the patron or patroness into their church. It is a dance. It is a prayer. But ka, ra, kol, three syllables. The three syllables 
signified the three years of preparation. Ka, kahapong kayaman, ating gunitain. A year of memorial, of thanksgiving, and also of asking pardon for our failures and sins. Ra, radical na pagsunod kay Jesus. Giving thanks with words is cheap. As Christians, the only appropriate way of giving thanks is to follow Jesus, to be true disciples in a radical way, rooted in the gospel, converting the core of our hearts. Call. We don't follow Jesus individually. And so, kolektibong pagkilos para kay Jesus. After all, that is what a diocese is. That is what a church is. A people gathered to respond together and to act together in faith, in mission. Karakol. The three-year preparation. It is now time to dance. To dance the real caracol. I promise not to cry. <laughs> and the sight last night of 10,000 people willing to renew themselves in discipleship and commitment to mission, that sight consoled me a lot. It consoled also so many people who got involved in the preparation. Last night, as one body, we said, the preparation has really taken root, and now it is time to dance and to reap the fruits of this year of favor. The Jubilee, the Jubilee according to the first reading, the Judeo-Christian tradition of the Jubilee is about a year of favor from the Lord, a year of forgiveness of sins, a year when we are set free from everything that shackles us, everything that dehumanizes us, especially sinfulness. The graciousness of God is seen in His willingness to extend to us as a jubilee gift, forgiveness. That's why the cathedral and eight other jubilee churches have been granted by the Holy See the privilege of granting the plenary indulgence whenever we visit those churches after having done or fulfilled the necessary conditions. It is a year of God's favor. It is a year of renewal of the heart, of the mind, of priorities, so that we will be truly the children of God enjoying the freedom of the children of God, witnessing to creation and to the world that are groaning that the freedom of the children of God is real. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, here in the Diocese of Emus, yes, the Lord will be gracious. The Lord will forgive us our many failures. But let us commit ourselves to conversion. Imagine if in this year, the almost 3 million Catholics of Cavite will go to those nine churches and fulfill the obligations of going to confession, praying, attending Mass, making restitution for sins. Cavite 
will be renewed. Cavite will be truly the home of God. Thanks to God's favor. And this is not just because it is the Jubilee year. 50 years is something that we can count. But the second reading reminds us that there is no Jubilee on the 50th year without the call of God from all eternity. We are connected now to the eternal will of God, to the eternal plan of God that has called us to be a people, a diocese. Alam ko po, ang Cavite, ang Cavitenyo, ay merong connotation, lalo na noong nakaraan. Pag sinabing Cavite, sasabihin nila, Naku, delikado dyan. Pag sinabi nila, Oh, Cavite, nardong putik. Oh, but why do they forget Cavite, the place that welcomed the galleons, the ships carrying so many missionaries, the, those who brought the faith to these islands? Why don't they say Cavite, the place of freedom, the place of lupang hinirang, Cavite, from where the, the daily song of every Filipino, Lupang Hinirang, was composed. Cavite, where the freedom that we enjoy as a republic was proclaimed. And let us add, Cavite, the place of the children of God, because they are truly free, free from sin, free from poverty, free from division and hatred and greed, only love, Cavite. But the Jubilee, according to the Gospel, is not just about time, it is about a person, the one who brought the good news to the poor. Freedom to captives, sight to the blind, a year of favor from the Lord. Jesus is the Jubilee. He is our Jubilee yesterday, today, and forever. And the door, the holy door that we blessed last night and opened at midnight, symbolizes Jesus, the door to the sheepfold, the door to the Father. So during this Jubilee year, let us not forget Jesus. He is our way. He is the way to freedom. He is the way to justice. He is the way to truth. He is the way to true peace. There will be no Jubilee without Jesus. And since this diocese, this cathedral church, have been dedicated to our Blessed Mother, the woman of the Jubilee, the woman who bore Jesus Jubilee incarnate in her womb, we have a sure guide, we have a sure mother who will lead us to Him so that whatever time of the year it may be, or whatever moment in our history it may be, it will always be a jubilee. Let me end by saying that the jubilee is also a coming home. A coming home to the house of the Father, the church, to pray to be renewed in mission, especially in the diocese where we have identified five areas of mission, ang larangan ng pagkilala sa Diyos, 
ang larangan ng pagtataguyod ng buhay, ang larangan ng pagtatanggol sa tao, ang larangan ng tamang ka- pamamahala sa kalikasan, ang larangan ng kaayusan ng panlipunan. We will not be wanting in mission during this jubilee and beyond. But on this 50th year, I know Bishop Casas is with us. He will not miss this jubilee. He is here. He has come home. And we want to thank his brother, Monsignor Casas, and his niece, Sister uh, Bernadette Casas, representing our first bishop. Thank you po for coming. I know so far the bishop that has served the Diocese of Imus for almost half of its 50 years is definitely here with us. Not only because his final resting home is right here, but his spirit continues to live in us to inspire us and animate us. Our dear Bishop Felix Perez, he is home. And we want to thank his nieces and nephews who are here to make Bishop really come home in the flesh. Maraming salamat po sa inyo. And our beloved Bishop Maning Sobrevinas, totally at home here. And we remember the many, many lay people, religious priests who will never be erased from the common memory and the mission of this diocese. They come to mind. They are home. And let us remember them in a moment of silence. There are more things to say, but we have a whole year to tell our stories. We have a whole year to renew ourselves in mission. Looking at the first photographs of the diocese, we counted 25 priests, two religious. Now, to date, we have 116 diocesan priests. And in a few days, that number will increase to 121 with the ordination of our five deacons. We have 64 parishes, quasi-parishes, and pastoral centers. We have 83 religious congregations in the diocese, 109 male religious, and the staggering 639 women religious in the diocese. We have six societies of apostolic life. Oh, we have innumerable valiant lay people belonging to secular institutes, lay associations, and different ecclesial movements. 
We have many schools. We have two universities here. We have colleges, high schools, elementary schools, Catholic hospitals. The church is ready to dance. And we have to dance with vigor. We have to dance the karakol with love. Of course, with humility, but with zeal for our Lord and for our mission. In closing, the first three bishops of Imus came from Manila. Bishop Casas was an auxiliary bishop of Manila when he was assigned here. Bishop Perez was a priest of Manila and even the treasurer of Manila when he was assigned here. Bishop Maning was the auxiliary bishop of Manila when he came here. Now, I go to the mother church. The daughter, Imus, is ready to send now pause and allow the grace of the moment to fill our hearts and renew us in discipleship and mission.